You've dressed up for today. I'm impressed. Um, morning, morning attire. Um, not, not morning time. Not morning time. <laughs> morning as if, as in grieving for the death of a relative. So this week will be the last week of mourning. The last week. Been one year. Been one year. It's been one year. Yep. So are you telling me that you've been wearing black for a year? Yep. So what are you gonna do next week? What are you gonna? I'm gonna pull out my aloha. You're gonna pull out your bright. <laughs> so morning is a big deal here in Tonga. There's a lot of cultural aspects, especially when you're from the east side and the ancient capital of Tonga. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the families are a lot more traditional right. and keeping with uh, cultural aspects of life. And it seemed also the cultural aspects of death. In my short time so far in Tonga, I had noticed it was filled with cemeteries and well-adorned graves, some with extravagant decoration and bright colours. It's just a sign that um, your family still thinks of you and is still missing you. Polynesians believe that the spirit of their relative or ancestor still lives um, in the underworld. And that's probably one of the reasons why Polynesian cultures were able to accept Christianity um, so easily was because of the similarities and the traditional belief of Polynesia and Christianity. The ancient graves, known as Langi, that Daniel was showing me, had led the way for extravagant burials. It's the first thing that you notice is the size of the stones. Um, it's the, yeah, the stones are just huge. They were hewn from um, quarries in Wallace Island and Futuna Island. But that's so far away. Oh yeah, that's over a thousand kilometers away. And it was just to show how influential and powerful they were. While exploring this side to Tongan culture had been interesting, Daniel wanted to show me the more mysterious remnants of Tongan history. What, do you, what was the reason for building this? Um, there are a number of different theories. I'm actually currently writing a book on some... Are you serious? ...recent discoveries that I've made. Okay. And part of it has to do with um, the western leg right here. If you notice, it's kind of leaning. The angle that it leans is actually the angle of this exact spot to the path of the sun or the Tropic of uh, Capricorn. Once they could clearly mark the path of the sun, yeah. then the ancient Polynesian navigators could mark the path of certain stars and know exactly where they were in the world, especially the latitude. Currently, um, all historians and anthropologists believe that Tonga and Samoa are the heart of Polynesia, but they're not really sure where which came first, Tonga or Samoa. But the fact that the Ha'amonga of Maui, or the burden of Maui is in Tonga, to me signifies that this is where it all began. One of the interesting things about Tonga is that um, we've never been colonized as a country. Um, Tonga has the only surviving monarchy in all of Polynesia. And, um, and I think a lot of that has had to do with Tonga's ability to to adapt to change. And I think the democratic changes that we're having now is just part of that process. 